hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Beth from Spiral Path Healing Arts and I'm so glad to have you with me today and I'm so excited to share with you my latest Zero Waste Sustainable Living project, my sacred action, again, around laundry. I feel like uh, it's probably one of the areas of our daily, day-to-day -day chores that is the simplest uh, to make some very easy and inexpensive changes that, um, well, actually they're so inexpensive they can ultimately save us some money and uh, with just a little bit extra work and they're good for us, they're good for the planet and it's a project I have been putting off for way too long and I'm so excited to share it with you today. So a little backstory about the history of my clotheslines <laughs> and why I'm so mad at myself that it took me this long to get one again. Uh, back in 92, 93, um, I put in a very similar clothesline to the one I just put in here because I was having a baby. I had my oldest daughter in the fall of 93 and um, put in a clothesline at our little house that we had in town in a suburb of the Chicago suburbs. And I, because I had made the decision that I was going to use cloth diapers with this baby. And I did, very successfully. And, uh, but if I was going to do cloth diapers, I wanted to be able to hang them on the line because the sunshine sanitizes and bleaches out the uh, things that you put on it on a good sunny day. So it's perfect for uh, doing cloth diapers. And I grew up in the country on a farm in rural Michigan and grew up hanging laundry on the line and loved the um, just the feeling of clothes that were snapped clean and dry on the line and the smell of laundry fresh off the line. Well, that is when the neighbors weren't spreading manure on their fields right after you put the laundry on the line. But most of the time, the laundry came in smelling uh, fresh and clean. Also, during dusty uh, harvest time, you didn't want to put your clothes on the line either because it would get, uh, it would come in dirtier than it, and then it went up. But not an issue here where I live now. So back to 93, I put up that line and I used it for the four years, three years or so we lived in that house before I got pregnant again. And we decided that that house was too small and, um, too close to the neighbors, two country kids uh, trying to grow, raise a family in town. So we moved kind of out to a um, more suburban neighborhood, but we still had lots of, we had so much more privacy at that place. And I lived there for 21 years and I never put up a clothesline. We put in a pool and I never put up a clothesline, which would have been very handy for all those pool towels, but we just hung them over the pool fence. Um, and so here we are almost well, 29 years later, almost, since the first clothesline I put up, and I finally got a new clothesline, and I'm so excited about it. It's such a dorky um, thing to be excited about, but um, if you saw my earlier video about repairing my dryer, um, why I didn't think of doing this before I took the time to repair the dryer, all the time that the dryer was squealing and squeaking and not working properly, I could have just been hanging my clothes on the line. But now I have an option. Either way, if it's a sunny, windy day, I can put stuff on the line. And if it's uh, a cold, blustery, or rainy day, which we get a lot of rainy days here in Chattanooga. So there may be many days uh, that I will still be needing to uh, use the dryer. But it's nice to have the option.
So a few notes about how I went about this project and um, some of the supplies and things that I used. So first of all, I ordered the clothesline itself on Amazon. I did a little research. I decided which one I wanted. I wanted one that had uh, steel, was made from steel, especially the center support post and not aluminum because I didn't want it to get blown over in the wind easily. I wanted it to be much sturdier and last longer. I liked the idea of the parallel uh, lines rather than the ones that kind of go around in a square. Either one would have worked fine for me because I'm just doing my own laundry. Um, I don't have a large household, but if you do have a large household or you do a lot of larger sheets, the kind I got is definitely better for that because you can get more clothes on a on it. It's bigger. Um, I figured I'd, I'd rather have the um, flexibility to put bigger things on it if I needed to, or larger loads of laundry in the future. Um, and then I also, because I rent here, I wanted to be able to take it with me. I don't know what my uh, ultimate plans are. If I can find the right house at the right price, which is gonna be really tricky in this market um, in the next year, then I will try to buy a house and move. But um, I'm more than happy to stay here for a little past my lease uh, going month to month if I need to. And because I, I, it's a great location for me, great little house for me, and I'm happy here. So that said, I still wanted it to be able to be moved. And they come with a socket that goes in the ground. And for best security, it needs to be anchored in the ground in such a way that it doesn't blow over or pull out. We have, depending on what part of town you're in, fairly, um, like my old house, it was very rocky and very hard clay. Um, and I probably could have just dug a hole and backfilled it and it would have been okay. But here, uh, because I'm on the edge of the woods, I have a little bit loamier soil, which is wonderful, um, but it's not as sturdy. So I knew I would need to cement that socket into the ground. And so I got the idea that I would, I've been saving these big yellow cat litter buckets. Uh, for a while. I've since switched the type of uh, cat litter I use, but I had a half a dozen of those sitting around and I wasn't going to recycle them. I, I have some ideas, some other um, zero waste ideas that I'm going to use those buckets for, but I thought well, I will put one in the ground, level with the ground, fill it with concrete and put the socket in there. Great idea. And it was a good idea. And there also happened to already be a hole in my backyard. I don't know the origins of this hole. There's actually were a number of holes in my backyard. I don't know. I think there was a dog that lived here previously that maybe dug these holes. Um, I'm not sure what they're, where, where they came from, but there was already a hole in the basic general area of where I wanted to put this clothesline. So I just made that hole a little bigger and the dirt I took out of that hole, I put in the other holes. So I no longer risk uh, twisting an ankle in my backyard when I'm out there with the animals. So, or mowing my lawn. So I made the hole big enough to put the, the bucket down in. And then I went and got concrete to fill it. And you will see that I had to make two trips to get, uh, I had to go back again and get another bag of concrete. Hindsight being 2020, what I would have done instead of using this big bucket that it's probably even bigger than a five gallon bucket. I, I didn't measure how much water it contains, but it took almost two full bags 50 pound bags of quickcrete. Uh, not quite the sec full of the second one. So let's just say it has 75 pounds of concrete in it easily. Um, if I were to do it again, I would probably get like a two gallon or so like plant pot, like a smaller plant pot that the um, socket would fit in and, it, and put that in there and bury it in. And that probably would have been enough to keep it anchored down in, especially if I buried it a little bit deeper and mounted the dirt over it, that would have, I mean, you can't cover the top of the socket because you gotta have that open to put the post in, but something that probably would have been enough to hold it in because now when the day comes that I need to move, I have to move a 75 pound <laughs> bucket of concrete, but it's not undoable. Uh, I'll put it on a, a, 
uh, hand cart and roll it into the U-Haul whenever I move and dig another hole and it'll be fine. Um, another thing I could have done was just anchor it the way it is and when it went time to move it again, leave the socket where it was, um, especially if I had managed to get it flush with the ground, which I didn't, you'll see in the video that it sticks up. That was just a whole other, my mistake, uh, kind of thing, bad measuring. Um, and I could get a PVC piece of PVC pipe that has the diameter large enough for the post to go in and then just redo the process of the new house. But I haven't, that's neither here nor there. It works. But if you were to want to copy what I did, I would suggest some kind of smaller bucket than the 40 pound cat food or cat litter bucket. Just unless you live in a really, really windy area or have really, really soft soil that that might not anchor in um, a smaller, you know, you need the heaviness to anchor it in. But this sucker ain't going anywhere, which is great. I'm happy. So um, otherwise the process was very simple. Uh, and then because I had gaps around the edges of the bucket once it was in place, I just got another bag of sand and filled that in with sand. Ultimately, what I would really like to do is take some mint. I have some potted mint and I have some potted lemon balm and thyme and a few other kind of aromatic-y kind of herbs. And I'm thinking that I'm going to um, plant those around the edges of where the bucket is and they can, as if you've ever planted mint, it spreads like crazy. It will spread into the lawn. That lawn back there is not a gorgeous lawn. It is mostly weeds already. So I'm not uh, harming any lush landscape by any, probably improving it anyway. And let the uh, mint and uh, thyme and things spread out underneath the, the uh, clothesline. And then when I'm out there hanging laundry, if I step on it and crush it a little bit, it's just going to add scent and it's going to be lovely. So that's a summer plan. We'll see if I get that done or not. Um, because really with the way it rotates, if you have, I could put just a um, flat, I want to say standing stone. That is a standing stone. Um, paver type piece of paver right there on the one spot because as you're, hanging laundry, you can just turn the clothesline and hang your laundry. You don't have to walk around it and walk up and down. So you just have one place to stand and then plant uh, scented herbs around it. And it would be, um, I think, kind of cool. The other thing is to try to keep the dogs from underneath it because I don't want to accidentally st step in a pile. No, we don't want to talk about that. Anyhow, so I hope you enjoy the pro watching me do this little uh, project and it's just a great way to uh, save on electricity and um, just another sustainable sacred action that uh, you can do at your house if you have a, any kind of yard. Oh, I hear Tony. I hear Tony. Oh, she just wants in on the action here, too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we will see you later. Oh, I guess it's this guy's turn. Hold on.